You're listening to RTI Audio, powered by Rocky Top Insider. This is Pancakes and Bacon with VFL, Tyler Kerbison, and Reed Bacon. Hello, Vol Nation. Welcome to another episode of Pancakes and Bacon. I'm your host, as always, Kyler Kerbison, joined with Reed Bacon. Have another great one. We're breaking down film on offensive line uh, commit, William Satterwhite. And I'm also sharing a big orange juice about a little bit of hazing that happened uh, while I was at Tennessee my first couple of years, but it's all in good fun. Uh, so before we get into any of that, if you guys are watching, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment, love the comments. If you're just listening, rate and review, download and re-download and follow us on those listening platforms. Also follow us on social media at Pancakes and Bacon on Twitter for our main account at Pancakes and Bacon underscore RTI on Instagram. Uh, you can follow Reed on Twitter. His main account is at rbacon26. Uh, if you want to follow myself, it is just at Kyler Kerbison on all social medias. So check me out there. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into the great pod. All right. Welcome in, everybody. Got a great podcast today. I will say that because we're breaking down an offensive lineman's film, which is like my favorite thing to do. And I also have a great and funny story to tell. Um, but first, before we get into that, read. How we doing, bud? Happy Monday, Monday to all you folks out there. When you watch this, happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, doing well on this end. Um, yeah, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun one. I uh, I did a little comparison today, which which will be enjoyable. Um, mm -hmm. I just said I wasn't gonna do that on a podcast. <laughs> And now I'm doing it. So yeah. uh, that, you, that you've also said multiple times you're never going to look into a recruit that doesn't commit to us. But here we are. <laughs> I'm just a big liar. You need to be a truther. No, I no that. Hey, we are truthers. We we try to keep it. We try to keep it real, and we don't try to blow smoke one way or the other. Uh, as real which, as we can. Which sometimes I think people love that, and maybe other times people get a little <laughs> little upset about it. Yeah. How's your day? Um, weekend was good. It was my birthday this past weekend. So the boy is officially 30 years old. <laughs> As you can tell, for people listening, Reed has a shocked look on his face. Um, it is because he called me on my birthday. We had a fantastic conversation, laughed, um, but forgot to say happy birthday, even though he told me two days before, oh, what are you doing for your birthday? <laughs> so he knew it was on Friday, but. And that's oh, all. my gosh, bro. 7-7. Seven, <laughs> seven. You can, I mean. It's pretty easy. It is 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, my gosh. I cannot freaking. Like, <laughs> it just it just skipped over. And you know what? And you know what? I was very out of pocket on Friday um, because. Uh, TZ came in town and we played golf at, at Holston. I, yeah. it, it, it went back like four years when I was still living in Nashville. He got tickets to a Titans game and uh, it was him and his now wife, Ellie, uh, and myself and a girl that I was dating at the time. And he invited, and I tried to pay him for the tickets and he, and he wouldn't take money for them. And I said, and at that time he had just started playing golf. I said, all right, bro, like I'll, I'll bring you to Holston and it's on me. And he's like, all right, deal. Well, now four years later, it finally worked out that, we were able to do it. So we played and I, I legit put the phone in the golf cart and didn't really look at it. it had, you know, when I was, I looked at it maybe once just to check to see if Megan had, had texted or called or, you know, if there's an emergency going on. Yeah. But, uh, holy crap. I, <laughs> wait, I did ask you the day before or two days before. What it was like, yeah, it was like a couple days before you like, like asked about like, Oh, what are you going to like, what are you going to do for your, are you going somewhere for your birthday? Like you were like, you knew it was on that day. Yeah. And then obviously. you called and then you called me that day. And as soon as I saw your name, I was like, oh, yeah. like I'm gonna answer this and he's gonna start like singing a song or yeah. like doing something for the birthday. 
but then we just you know we just talked about the podcast and everything and i was like i'm not gonna give i'm not gonna tell him and i'm not gonna give him a hard time about it wait what did uh what, what when did i call you on friday it was in the middle of the day i know i was at work oh oh my gosh i remember it now yeah we talked about our idea about go of going to spring practice and doing the yes oh my gosh <laughs> I'm an idiot, bro. I'm so so sorry. You you you're good. You like Logan, Tyler, and Jack are like the the, the four friends. I'm usually always try to be so good about that stuff, and then besides and then my family besides my family. But yeah, damn, bro. I'm so sorry. I I am plus shook it, right now. Plus, it throws it throws everybody off. Fourth of July week. And... No, no, that that's not an excuse for me. <laughs> no, I, I effed up. I I effed up. I didn't even send you my naked pictures. <laughs> that's right i'll get yeah you'll and get, then you'll get luckily, those right after like, you know i i pulled like the best move a husband can pull and made my wedding day two days after my birthday so i just had my seventh seventh anniversary on my i knew day. it was y'all i knew it was y'all seventh anniversary because i got snap stories uh from your wedding and it said Yes, six or seven years ago, and so I counted it up. That's crazy. You all been married seven years. That's awesome, though. I know, and and me and Brian were talking about it, and she was like, "It doesn't really feel like that long." And I go, "It probably doesn't feel that long because we were dating longer, right, than seven yeah. years before yeah. we got married." So it's like comparatively to our entire relationship, because we started dating as sophomores in high school. It's like seven doesn't feel very long. Right. It's going to be really cool, though, when you're both like in your 70s and 80s. But we've been together 68 years now. I mean, seriously, it's going to be cool. Like, that's a, that's an accomplishment, you know? Yeah, I know. So, I, I um, definitely don't want to be like one of those old couples. you like, ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> like, <laughs> we just yell at each other all the time. Hey, so what did so you do? What did you do for your birthday? What did you do this weekend? For the birth, uh, so what did y'all do the for, the bir- for the birthday and the anniversary? So for the anniversary, we really didn't do anything we just hung out on sunday um actually booked some flights for a european vacation we're going to take uh so that was pretty exciting uh pretty exhausting as well trying to logistics and all that stuff uh but friday went to five points got me a nice big old pepperoni pizza a couple beers that's 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 my kind of birthday meal so and that was, yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. And then we got like some pies after that. And yeah. What kind of pies? Um, I got a, a cookie something or another. It was literally a cookie. Like it was just a thick cookie. Yeah. Where, where'd you go? <laughs> um, What's that place called? The soda shop. Okay. I yeah. Bet. Yeah. It's, it's like a old school thing. That's like near Vanderbilt university um but they have these uh god what are they called i can't remember what they're but they're like flavored soda water and oh, phosphates okay. that's it okay and brian loves them gotcha. so we like went there and like got a little dessert and she got a little phosphate so um did you get any cool birthday presents uh no but i bought myself <laughs> cool presents because nowadays with me, Brienne, it's very much like, well, we sh- share a bank account, you know, like right, you right. can get whatever you want. Um, but I've been, I like, I like bought myself some different clothes, nice for stuff. So, and then, then when you got home, you got the real birthday present. What's <laughs> up, baby? Hey, back that thing on up. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know you were gonna say that? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, uh, big dog. That's all we big dog, hear about. Big dog putting that work in. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, but really happy freaking birthday, happy anniversary. I feel like a total freaking awful friend. And yeah, I remember calling you, and I and I don't know why I didn't think because yeah, you're right. I would have like sang or whatever else. But yeah, uh, I was I was ex- I was expecting it. Yeah. Um, well, a couple um, things before we move into pod stuff. One. I wanted to shout out Max Anderson, an offensive lineman that's in this committing class. And, you know, we put out the podcast, 
you know, breaking down his film. We put out a little video just about, you know, what we thought about him. Um, and he obviously went back, watched it, and DM'd us and was like, hey, I appreciate you being real. And I appreciate like what you're saying. Like, I'm going to like, I'm going to work and keep getting better. And it was, it was Caleb Herring all over again. It is a prime example of a kind of player you want on the team that's humble and is ready to take anything that comes their way and likes to hear this kind of stuff. Um, sometimes you really can't like teach that with guys. Like you really can't get them to accept coaching. And it seems like Max does it and it, it like all, automatically like just moves up the leaderboard as like one of my favorites of this class because of a situation like that. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to bring that up. It was uh yeah. He basically just said, thanks for the feedback and you know, like nice words, but he, he mentioned on there, he appreciates it that we were honest and kept it real compared to other people. And I think a lot of those recruits probably get annoyed with that about, everyone just kind of kissing their ass and they're just like, get the fuck over it, man. Like, you know what I mean? After a while, it's just, you know, so many people are just BSing you and blowing gas. And, um, yeah, and, I mean, for myself personally, I can't stand someone who I think is fake and disgenuous and just really, um, you know, doing stuff like that to, to try to get around you or get something out of you. So it was cool. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think I'm, I don't think anything impresses me more than someone that's at a pretty high stature like that, that young, that is like, because if it, I, I sit back and think if it was me and I saw this, I'm like, who are these two fucking yokers, in their, <laughs> in, you know, in their mom's basements, yeah. just like talking about my football game, like who are these losers? And so, you know, now obviously if they dive deep, then your resume speaks for itself. But uh, it, it, it was, it was neat to see that. And you and I have had, many conversations about the uh, unanswerable question, which is why do guys not pan out? Whether it's in college or in high, or in college or in the pros. And you always say, if you think a guy has an ego and is not willing to be coached, uh, which then will also go into his ability to his work ethic of some case, mm -hmm. they're not going to pan out. And so I know that you love that. And you and like you said, those are the perfect type of kids that you want to bring into your program. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I mean, so, you don't – when you're that type of kid, you literally can lead without saying a freaking word because you just go in there and work and grind and you're curious. You're asking questions. You're always like, hey, what did I do here? What's going on with this? Hey, how can I get better at this? Hey, coach, can you stay with me after practice? Hey, can you stay with me after practice? Like – there's just guys that that have that mentality. And like whenever I got that, you know, towards my later years at Tennessee and had younger guys coming up to me, it just made like it made me feel so good that I was like, OK, this is awesome. Like these guys are coming right after me and they want to be better. They want to be successful. They want Tennessee to be good themselves first, you know, to get to that point. Um, so it was always it's it's. It's the one determining factor that that I find that can keep keep someone going. Like Derek Barnett, he would come to me at practice, and you know while we're in between drills, or both of us had already gone with the ones, the twos are up, or something like that. And he'd come to me and be like, "Hey, do you mind going over to the right side and working with me over there? I need to work on my stab." for run defense or something like that. Like we worked together my last year where he was like, I want to go against you every time. And I, and I said the same thing. I was like, I want to go against you every time because it makes me better. And it was like very collaborative between me and him of like, Hey, I want to work on this. I'd be like, all right, like I'll, I'll do that. Like I'll jump set you right now so that you can kind of work on what you're trying to work on. And it was just it like that kind of interaction is so great for a team and so great for individuals where it's like, all right, we're coming out here to compete. Like, I want to try something. I want to like DBs and wide receivers talking to each other, you know, DNs and tackles talking to each other, linebackers and running backs talking to each other, just little stuff like that. I mean, a linebacker tied in or tight end goes up. Hey, how do I get out of this break where I can really affect the linebacker? How do I fake him out the most, you know, and just share back and forth. Cause that can, 
that can be so much so much more of an advantage than sitting in a dark ass meeting room and seeing a coach just clicker 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 and laser point and just doing all that and it's like sometimes you're out in the field with your guy like gives you a little more a little more juice to it yeah i i agree and i i, I think it's just a um it's a it's a principle for whatever you want to do you know what i mean it's you have to be coachable you want to have to be able to work hard um no matter how good you think you are at something or how much you know you should always trying to be learning and always trying to get better. It's the cliche of the cliche, but, but it's, it's true. And obviously all the greats uh, will tell you the exact same thing. So I think that's why you have always mentioned it. Yo, I've seen these guys that are five stars and they come in and they either have the biggest ego or don't want to work. And that's why they never pan out. Yeah. It's why some of them, uh, so why some of them won't do 10 push jumps when they step on the, uh, power, power, power. yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. So she shared that 10 push up story and it blew up on social media, which is awesome. Great. Uh, I even had like a cabinet guy that worked cause I'm in construction. I even had a cabinet guy like text me today. He was like, sir, did you play for the vol? So I was like, yes, I did. He was like, literally didn't know that until I saw your face pop up, pop up on my Instagram feed awesome. <laughs> on Rocky Top Insider. And I was like, yeah, man, check out the pod. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that, it was very cool. Yeah. It's, it, it was, it was awesome to see that. Um, it was great to get more followers uh, on the social side of stuff because we are about to ramp up into the best time of year for us when we're going to fall practice, oh, giving yeah. the best insight, breaking down the game. So I, I think getting some more people will be great. And I'm sorry, I've tried to be as good as I can on responding to some of the comments on YouTube. You all are awesome. Thank you for those. Um, we, we read them all. Uh, we apologize if we don't answer all of them, but thank you. And then, uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about big William and, uh, Let's, yeah, uh, let's talk let's, about Big William. Do you want to start with a uh, list of some offers? Yeah. Where he's from, height, weight? Absolutely. And then we'll let you break it down. Uh, Big William is, let's see, where to go? 6'3, 300. Uh, really good size. Um, he's a four star, 24 7 sports, uh, four star on the composite. And, um, a really nice offer list, Kyler. Very, very nice. So you got Tennessee, you got Clemson, you got Bama, Auburn, uh, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Miami, Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, uh, Pittsburgh, um, and Wisconsin. Obviously, I just named the bigger ones. There's also a bunch of smaller ones. Mm -hmm. um, one of the top players in the state of Ohio. Really, really neat to show that kind of like back in the day when Philip Palmer was here and we would pick and choose whoever and wherever the Carolinas, Florida, Texas, uh, California, Ohio, whatever, you know, Ohio uh, has a pretty big school up there. If you haven't heard of it, it's Ohio state. So I don't, um, you know, I don't know if they didn't recruit him hard or, or whatever the case may be. I don't have their recruiting board in front of me, but I will always take a stud from another state. Yeah. Um, and I will say that I will be talking after Kyler does about an individual who was in state, who has gone elsewhere mm -hmm. and picked Clemson over us. And then William picked Tennessee over Clemson in a yeah. very couple day span. So what did you see on William's film? So, and I think, um, everyone will notice this when they first start watching William's film. Um, and I kind of want to talk about some intricacies of offensive line stuff so people can understand. William's base is probably his biggest strength uh, and his feet. So when he attacks on a run block, even when he attacks on pass pro, he has a good, solid base. His feet are not narrow. They're not close. His feet aren't narrow and split where one's way ahead of the other. And that is for a reason. If everyone, if anyone has ever lifted before, you are stronger when you squat than when you do a lunge or when you do a split squat or when you do a step up. You're stronger on two legs than you are on one. So have a base, have a squat position underneath you 
you're stronger and can move people against their will. And that's what William does. He moves people against their will with a big, strong base and fits his hands great. Mm-hmm. The, the other week we were talking about getting those hands outside, offensive of lineman in high school, bear hugging on the outside of the shoulders. William attacks the breastplate. And when he's in pass pro, he does a great job of replacing his hands. That's one of the biggest things. Defensive line coaches, what do they coach them? Knock your hands down. Knock their hands down. Get their hands off you. Don't let them touch you. Don't let them... Defensive linemen are doing that the entire play. They're not just giving up after the first swipe. So sometimes they might get your hands off. How quickly can you replace? William does a great job at that. Um, he also knows how to play the man. Okay. There is a lot of wasted effort by offensive linemen trying to pull or torque a guy away from the ball carrier, right? Ball carriers running to my left. And then I try and grab the guy and push him to my right. It never works out well. That's not the way you do it. What you do is you try and run to that guy's right shoulder. You try and cross his face so that you are in between him and the running back. William is great at this. When he's cutting off a linebacker at the second level, he gets his hat across. He plays half the man. When he's blocking down from a tackle position and the ball's going outside, he plays the outside half of that three technique or whoever's inside of him. So he doesn't play the center of him and then get beat across his face. He plays the outside half. It is very difficult to fight across someone else's helmet. That is a teaching point for most offensive coaches, offensive line coaches, two offensive linemen, and I hope that happens in every avenue of it, but it is playing half the man. It is getting your helmet to the correct side of the man you're blocking. William has been taught this, and he does it on almost every play. And then you add in the physicality. The I am going to drive you 30 yards downfield. I don't care what else is going on around me. I have my hands on you. You're going down. Love to see it. There are multiple plays of him just going and going and going and go. And it's very like I'm taking this one-on-one one-on-one block personal. I don't care what everybody else is doing on the play. I don't care if we got a tackle for loss. I don't care if there was a sack, if there was a fumble, if there was an interception. My job right now is to put you in the dirt. And he does it. So love that about William. I was very much, as I went through this, like, okay, great technique. He drives dudes to the dirt. He puts in that effort. He's got a good base. And I thought, you know what? He seems like a solid dude that might not have the most speed in the world, but he's really super strong because he's a 6'3", 300, like a good stocky kind of guy. Then to about the four-minute, 55-second mark, He's at left tackle, and I see him take off out of his stance to try and reach a defensive lineman. And I was like, where was that? Where was that in all the rest of the film? Like, that kind of takeoff in feet and his ability to run, that got me excited because this man is playing guard or center. He's not going to play tackle at Tennessee. He's just – it's just not his body type. He's going to play guard and center, and it was – okay, when we have those pulls and get to the outside, can he run? Can he get around on a power or a counter and knock somebody out? Can he get loose on a screen? Because those are the guys blocking for you. It's not the tackles. Tackles are never blocking downfield on screens. It's always guard centers. So once I saw that out of him, it like kind of changed my, literally my view of him through the film. Um, But I, I like I like him a lot. I think like all of that stuff I mentioned is just great. I, I think he has been forced to play tackle because he is such a good athlete and such a good player, but that's not his position. I think once he gets inside, it's going to be like lights come on. Oh, this is amazing. This is great. And guess what? He even had pass pro sets in there. Oh. I love it. Guys never put their pass pro sets. And he did where he's staying in front of dudes, 
working his feet, replacing his hands, jump sets, great jump sets at a tackle position. And that's exactly the kind of thing he's going to do at guard. So I loved everything about his film. And he's playing really good competition up in Ohio. Um, Heck, he's even playing international, played like a Canadian team. So I think they went to state. They lost. But, like, everything about this film, I was like, there's a reason he's a four-star out of Ohio, and he got all of these offers and is being recruited the way he is. Yeah, I also know another player who uh, played out of position because he uh, <laughs> was one of the better players and had to help the team. So, uh, yeah, you know him pretty well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm looking at him right now. Um, you know, you know what William is to me, Kyler. What, Kyler William is an offensive lineman. Yeah. I'm, you know why I say that? It's because I watched the film, and he does his job, and he does it well, and there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of probably people going up to William and, and smacking him on his butt, and there's not a lot of plays where people are going to be like, oh, wow, or oh, this or that, if, if they don't really know football. Yeah. And for the common fan, that's what an offensive lineman is. They do all the dirty work. They do all the – um, really important things, and uh, they usually don't get noticed for it. And that's just mm-hmm. kind of the vibe I got of this film. We've watched some films um, where guys are pancaking left and right and doing this and doing that, and you're going, oh, damn, or like this, that, and the other. It's like I'm watching this, and I'm like, good play. Good play. Right. Yeah, great play. Great, great he, play. You know, some – he didn't dump the guy, but his, okay. he made a hole. Great play. Right, right. And, and that's what it was – There was uh, there was also a little bit of everything – and it's and uh, like like you said, I thought his feet were were really great. He does have an awesome awesome base. He is that prototypical fire hydrant of a mm-hmm. guard, kind of like uh, Javante Spragans is now on the team with body size. Yeah. Um, a couple plays that I loved was like the two sixteen or two eighteen mark when he comes wham blocks. They run right behind him, and it's a touchdown. But after he makes that great initial block, he is still trailing the play running. Yeah. Um, to pick up some stuff. And I and I love to see that. And then I pause it here at the 246 mark. And it's a right tackle. Uh, they're running to the right. And he does such a good job of using that his his feet, his speed, and his base to really cut his guy off. And that can be really difficult to do because you know you need to get there. And depending on what the defense does, he may need to be trying to get there too. So you're trying to get to the spot. And a lot mm-hmm. of times what will happen is, all of his linemen's going there, and if that defense lineman gets there first, it's going to be a hold. And you, you know, they either they either hold and kind of pull to try to turn them and spin them. Um, they may yeah. try to hold and then try to drive, and they don't let go in time. But he does such a really, really good job of becoming a wall. I mean, you see his body here, and it just turns, 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 turns. He does a great job of staying in front and absolutely walling off his guy. Um, yeah, because I, I mean, that defensive end is probably taught you're contained. Right. You have to be outside. Right. So as soon as William takes off towards him, like he's taught, keep going. Yeah, I'm watching it here, and it's like he comes off and initially punches, but then instead, of, like he did such a good job of getting outside that it's not like come off and then try to work, and then you're in that hand battle. And if someone's – obviously, if it's a defensive end and he's you know, quicker than you are, then, then you can be in trouble as a big big fella. Mm-hmm. But he does a good job of almost when he comes off and he pops, he goes ahead and gets that little turn. It's almost like he uh, – it's it's almost like not the same um, movement, but the same principle of boxing out in basketball. Like he's yeah. getting in front and he's, hey, you're not – I'm staying in between you and the runner. And, and so I was really impressed by that because there's other films that I've watched where someone's going to come off and be handsy and grabby. Uh, I was happy that you mentioned – um, his hand placement, I think his hand placement's really smooth. Um, you know, I thought it was, um, I thought it was really productive. Yeah. You know, he, 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 maybe it's not coming off and just absolutely shocking the shit out of somebody with his, with his hands. I like the way you said that. Yeah. Productive. But it's, but the, but it's really productive. Um, mm-hmm. and that's why I just think like he's really good at what he does and it maybe doesn't uh, pop or stand out, but that most offensive linemen don't, you know, yeah, and um, so that's I, why I, that's that's why the to, the torchbearer of the year at Tennessee should be an offensive lineman every year. Okay, you hold light out there, you bring light to darkness for others. Okay, you do it for others. 
So, anyways, but um, knowing that he was going to play guard, base, guard or center, like yeah. he would, based on his size and stuff, like I said, I thought he worked up to the second level a couple times. Uh, it, he didn't do it a, a ton, but the ones that I saw, I thought he did really, really well. Mm-hmm. You know, he gets up there quick with his good base, with his good hands, makes good initial contact. Like I said, some of his pulls, some of his whams. I thought it was all great. And so I was like, you know, that that's awesome to see. And then on his pass pro, wait till he gets in at guard or center because pass pro is great when you're in there. It's mm-hmm. basically like, it's basically don't get bull rushed and pass and pass off stunts and and and, and wait. And yeah. um, and so that that made me feel very comfortable that he can do all those things really really well. Um, so I thought it was super solid. Um, everything that you want, there is the nasty, but it wasn't over overkill. Mm-hmm. Um, good hands, um, which is very important, I think, as an offensive lineman in high school. And I, I want it just because it's 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 happened so closely to when they were, were committing. And, and this is true, and I'm happy that I get to say this. I, I truly believe Tennessee got the better player out of these two individuals. Um, and one of them's a hometown guy. One of them's in Franklin, Tennessee. And – uh, I went and watched. I didn't really know anything about him, but I said I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch both of them and and bring this kind of to the pod. And and like I said, I was going to be honest. If I thought Ronan, I guess is how you say his name, Ronan O'Connell. If if he was better, you know me. I would have said, hey, I think I think they got the better player. Yeah. Um. Ronan is an absolute freak specimen. Uh, just size wise, strength wise. I if I'm not mistaken, I went and looked, uh, and it was him. That's also a wrestler. And you see him, and he's a unit, bro. Um, six four and a half, two ninety. But then I watch the film, and if you, he's a three star. You know, Williams a four star. And then if you look at the offer list, it's Clemson, Tennessee, Wisconsin, Arkansas, Florida State, Miami, and those are really the bigger ones. I mean, okay. William William had a much stronger uh, yeah. offer list. Yeah. And it to you and I will always, always, always love aggression and physical football play. We absolutely love that. Mm-hmm. I thought that was only, I really thought that was the only thing that Ronan brought to the table. Okay. And, and every play is just, it's, it's like he is so, he, he just plays that big unit. He plays <laughs> up to that, and that's great. But, you, but could, you, you, can, you can almost you can almost imagine what it sounds like. Oh no, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. So, and that's great. Don't don't get me wrong. But in the SEC, to play really good off his line, like you gotta be able to do everything. You can't be a one trick pony. And there wasn't yeah. much pass setting. And anytime he pass set, he did the exact same thing. He would pass set, let a guy get into him, take one arm and yank him down. Uh, from the from me, the chess player outside, and then would fall on him for a pancake. For a pancake, mm-hmm. it's like, bro, hey, you ain't gonna be able to get away with that in the SEC. And uh, yeah, try that on Will Anderson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and B, if you do get away with it, it's not gonna be like in high school where you're not getting called for it. And mm-hmm. so, I just felt like it was the way too over aggressive bull in a china shop. And this is all based on the film. I haven't watched these guys in camp. I haven't done anything, but based on film, it was just he thought that every play he had to pancake people. And I could see the aggression almost coming back to hurt him. And I thought of two things. Uh, I thought of one, it's like a safety um, that I, that we played with. It was a little bit older at Catholic. Mm-hmm. I will not mention names. The guy was a great, great guy, but he was an he was a, he did not mind to hit. He would come up and stick somebody. He would make a tackle. And then the very, very first pass play that they would run against him. Now he never started, but this was yeah. a practice. This was in practice, and and coaches wanted to be able to play him so that we didn't have to play our starting quarterback, uh, who was also a really good safety. Yeah. And it was like, if this guy can take – like I said, this was not our, our grades, so this was a couple years above us. And the very, very first pass play, you would look, and they would take a shot, and it's a touchdown, and you look, and the individual's, at, you know, 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage, and he's like, no, like, dang it. Like, he messed – like, there was just a mental block. It, yeah. They honestly should have just moved him to linebacker um, or whatever because he was physical enough. He just wasn't very big. Mm-hmm. And and I felt like after a time, you want that individual to win so bad because they're a good person. They try hard. Yeah. But it just doesn't click. 
we can't play someone who's getting beat. And I felt like Ronan was a little of that once he gets to a higher level. It's like, hey, man, like every offensive lineman, every offensive line coach in America is going to love you for your physicality mm-hmm. and how hard you work and all that. But we can't play you if you're getting whipped on pass pro or if you're getting penalties. I'm not saying that's what he will be in college. I'm just saying that was the type of player that it felt like when I was watching yeah. a film. And to tie it in, to finish it with a basketball player, Euros. Some people love Euros. Some mm. people got a little frustrated with Euros, like I did. I thought his antics were way too much, and everyone was like, you need a little guy like, you know, you need a guy like that on the team. Okay, but that guy also has to be able to know when to dial it back. In my opinion, Euros was not good enough for his antics and then he did lose us or have a play, in my opinion, in losing us games, whether it was yeah. two years ago or the stupid shit that he did against Florida Atlantic this year. Mm-hmm. That was just what I saw out of Ronan. It was just, and yes, you can hear it like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. and it's like, hey, guys, like, chill out. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I guarantee if you saw him at a camp, like you'd be on the sideline eager <laughs> as he's trying to block. Right, right. And like I said, I don't I don't know the kid. I, I hope him well. I mean, I, I'm fine with him going to Clemson and being a starter. And I'm not ever gonna talk about ill will, you know, any ill will, but I just saw those two. And it's like, okay, if we're gonna be in a recruiting battle with them, I love the one that we got because I felt yeah. like he was way, way I thought he was a way, way or excuse me, I thought he was a much, much better overall prospect. Mm-hmm. And if we if we already have a 6'5", 6'4", 300 guy from Texas who is a four-star and is also really aggressive. It's like, hey, we've already got that type of player who's a lot better than Max Anderson. Exactly. Let me go ahead and get another piece to the puzzle to mm-hmm. add with Max and Gage and whoever else. Yep. You know, and so yep. – and we haven't broken down Jesse Perry yet. I watched a little bit of his film when he first committed – I might. I think I'm going to see a lot of similarity between him and Ronan. It's like, do you really want to have two of those guys coming in at the same time? Yeah. You know what I, I mean? mean? As an offensive lineman, and I heard this so many times before, like I'd rather say whoa than sick him. You know, I'd rather say, hey, pull back a little bit than go, like go after them. So it's good that he has that aggression. But I've played with guys before that it's like. Buddy, calm down. Yeah. You are whiffing on blocks because you're going so damn hard. Right. You're trying right. to take this guy's head off and he's olaying you. Um, actually, it happened to a great offensive lineman at Tennessee, Antonio Richardson, who started for us. He had a personal vendetta against Jadavion Clowney. We were in the same class um, as Jadavion. And a- Antonio took it upon himself to say, I'm better than him. He shouldn't be ranked higher than me on anything. That was his motivation. He had him and Jadavion going against each other on his phone background. Like it was the most important thing to Tiny. And we're playing in Neyland versus him the first time. And Jadavion gets a lot of freedom with how he played. And he was just olaying Antonio, just shwoop, little swim, shwoop, little swim, because Tiny was trying to absolutely crush him, just go full bore at him. And it's like, buddy, you got to calm down. You cannot throw your head and throw everything at him because you want to out physical him. And, and the guy's big. So you think, I have to do this. He's so big and strong, but he's just like, soup, soup. Oh. You know what the perfect you know what the perfect thing to call that is, Kyler? What? It's when someone's pressing and you don't let the game come to you. Yeah. Let the let the game come to you and you'll be able to make those plays. I actually thought you were gonna say how Tiny had a good game a, a really good game against Clowney at South Carolina until the very last play. <laughs> yeah. So that was the year before. The year before. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that was the year before. So that that was extra motivation for Antonio when we played in Neyland. We ended up winning. It was a Polardi field goal where we beat, like, number 11, South Carolina. Right. But I remember 
it was like first two or three drives, we would run left and Antonio would miss every time because yeah. Jadavion wasn't playing what a normal defensive end does. So I'll give it to Tiny for that because you're not expecting a dude to swim inside when there's a three technique there. The J.J. Watt, hey, man, we're going to let you let you free run. J.J.'s going to get a couple sacks and a couple TFLs, and he's also going to give up a 50- or 60-yard run in his gap to Derrick Henry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you hit it right, if, you're, if your tackle's under control, um, you know, it, it, it'll work. But, yeah, so th- there's, there's times where it's like you got to, like you said, let it come to you. Yeah. And I, and, and there, and, and not to beat up on Ronan, it, it was just, it, it was almost just like, all right, like, can I see something else? Like, I get it. You're huge. G- great. I, I love that you're physical. Awesome. But can I see some good feet? Can I, can I see some good hands that aren't yeah. grabby? And, and to tie it back in before we move on to Big Orange Juice, that, that's what I felt like I saw with William. Like I said, I thought he was super solid. And I think he's a great piece to yeah. what this class is. Um, but if you got if you already have a good base, you have the natural size, you have the good hands, mm-hmm. you can do a little bit of everything, whether it's run block, run block, pass block, uh, pull, climb up. That's wonderful. I mean, that is that is so so wonderful. Um, yeah. and I think he's a really good prospect. Exactly. I completely agree. Very excited for William. Um, okay. Big orange juice. So I thought I'd share this podcast, but I thought it was relevant with some of the hazing news that is going on around college football right now. Um, And I do not condone any type of hazing. I think some of the descriptions of what was going on with that is kind of effed up. Um, but this was the version of hazing that was at Tennessee when I was there. My first couple of years actually got taken away while I was there. Um, I uh, I didn't even read what was going on at Northwestern. What was it? It's um, some former players came out and said that there was like a thing when freshmen would mess up during practice or workouts and they would call them out and then they would be like, you have to run or they would call it running. And the thing with running would be like putting like blindfolding him or like putting a mask on him and naked in like a dark room. And then like eight other dudes would come in there and like dry hump him for 10 minutes. Like it was like very odd Dry there, hump Yeah. That's literally what it said in the article. Is that they, yeah. So dude just wanted to go dry hump another, a guy who's not clothed? Yeah. So very weird. Very yeah, strange. That's, yeah, I, I, I don't mind, I don't mind some good hazing. I think, I think it's, it's a good part of uh, team building in a way, but that, that's just, <laughs> that's <laughs> just weird. That is way too much. I don't even think that's really that. I don't even think it's like, what are you hazing? Like, yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, bro, honestly, I would rather have a couple dudes come dry hunt me if they got clothes on than go run. <laughs> oh. uh, hey, whatever you do on the weekends, it's none of our business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Kyler. Act like you're not here with me, okay? <laughs> Don't act like you're not impressed. Um, so, our version of that at Tennessee when I first got there, it's uh, it was. It was always the first dinner before the first game. Um, and a upperclassman would uh, go over to the uh, dessert station and pick up the, you know, get, get a bowl and just absolutely fill it with one condiment, and that is a cherry. Um, he would then ding, 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 ding on the glass. Everybody would get real quiet and he would just walk over to a certain freshman and set it down in front of him. Um, And the place would erupt. The place think it's funny. The best part about it is as a freshman, you have no idea what's going on or what the hell it means. Nobody says anything to any freshman before it happens. Then after they explain, the explanation is, 
this freshman for unforeseen circumstances has decided to date a lady that has been very friendly with a lot of other people on the team. Um, so it is a kind of, hey, good job. Uh, here is a bowl of cherries for you. Um, so it was, it's a funny, like, Riz on somebody, it's not, hey, like you shouldn't date them, but like just letting you know because yeah. you just got here. You don't know, but now you do. Um, that uh, we all know her name. So <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of the, you know, it's a little bit of embarrassing for the person that, you know, the lady is probably not telling them what's right. going on. Right. right. So it's uh, it, but it was like a very, just like fun, funny thing. And, you know, some guys would take it uh, with a grain of salt. Some would continue to be with that lady for a little while longer. Uh, usually it was broken up, but that was always a very funny thing. And then I think Butch's first year that kind of got nixed. Um, so you had, so I mean, so you saw it, what, two, three times? I saw it twice. I saw it yeah. twice. Cause it and was once, just like, and the, once you were, and once you were a freshman. Once I, so actually I think I saw it three times. I think like we did it one, like it happened again, Butch's first year. And then he was that's, like, that's what I got called. Yeah. Like, let's not do that anymore. And we were like, all right, fine. But so, like, there was, there was never any other hazing that happened on the team. You know, it was never any of that. It, if anything was hazing, it was like, hey, freshman, I'm going to lay your ass out on the field because you're a freshman. Like that was that was the only thing that was happening. Let me let me ask you this. Do you remember being a freshman and seeing it happen and not knowing what was going on and being a little worried? Yeah, like I remember sitting, eating, you know, eating my food, just trying to be quiet, stay out of, you know, and then you hear the ding, 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 ding on the glass. And everybody's like, shh, it gets quiet. You're like, what the hell's going on, dude? <laughs> what is happening? Like chill running down your spine and like freaking Herman Lathers is walking around just like looking at people with a bowl of cherries. <laughs> just, is that who did it your freshman year? Yeah. Yeah. Just like walking around the tables like, oh, who's he going to get? Like, whoa, whoa. You know, and then set it in front of somebody. So. Who, who hey. I'm not going to ask who they said it in front of in your times there, but who was so Herman did it? Who else would would be the taker of cherries? Uh, so Herman did it. I think I think the last time we did it, AJ was doing okay. it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was it was usually like a defensive guy, you know, trying to try, try to rag on guys because for some reason defensive players were a little more adventurous all right let's say that um you know <laughs> at night on the weekends so but let me let me let me let me ask you this when it happened the first time you were there and you see it and then everyone starts laughing except you freshmen because you're like yo what's up then did 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 you get it do they explain it in front of everyone or you go to your offensive line older heads and like yo what's this about yeah that's exactly how they don't say anything then they don't say a word about what it is and it's very much like you gotta ask and some guys won't even tell you after you ask like i ah, don't worry about it uh, yeah <laughs> so it's like you gotta try and like figure it out maybe we'll ask a walk-on that's been there a couple years you know like yeah yeah but it was yeah i always thought it was like a it's a funny thing it doesn't hurt anybody it actually probably helps the freshman to be like yeah oh Hey yeah. man, you probably don't want to like. You don't want to go down that rabbit. You don't want to go down that rabbit. Hole. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, that was that was that was the hazing that was happening. All right. Now, for my big orange juice, I will go into the hazing that we did at Knoxville Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do that. Not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Cut this thing off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before before Reed gets in trouble. Um, but. Yeah, that was that was a great time. Good story. Well, Good story. Good. Well, um, I apologize again for <laughs> your birthday. Um, no but uh, fun pod, fun story. 
and uh, we'll get it, it's coming. It's coming, folks. So it's got, it, it's gonna be here before you know it. I know we're we're very close to August, getting to go to practice, first game of the year. I'm pumped. It's gonna be awesome. See you, brother. All right, man. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. If you are watching, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. We absolutely love the comments. If you're just listening, rate and review, download and re-download, and follow us on all those listening platforms you may use. Also, follow us on social media, at Pancakes and Bacon for our main account on Twitter, at Pancakes and Bacon underscore RTI on Instagram. If you want to follow Reed, you can follow him on Twitter. His main account is at RBacon26. And then if you want to follow myself, it is just at Kyler Kerbison for all social medias. So check me out there. Uh, but really appreciate you guys. Uh, you're what keeps this thing going. And uh, as always... Go Vols. <laughs>